congratulations. If you're actually considering watching a guide for Lord of a Minion, then you're probably already in the top 20 players on your world. Give yourself a pat on the back, pop some Realm Reborn Red. You did it, friend. So, why play Lord of a Minion? Maybe you want to play it because it's a fun little minigame involving quick thinking and light strategy. No? Well, um, maybe it's because it gives you some Mandeville Gold Saucer points when you finish a game. Oh, oh wait, no, it actually doesn't. Um, well, maybe it's because you want to play 5 games for the challenge log. Playing 5 games will net you 27,000 MGP per week before the bonuses. Though you could do this versus AI or even blow through a challenge mission to get those points very quickly. I mean, the wait timer is longer than the entire match in the Little Big Beast challenge. Um, well, maybe it's because you want to enter the tournament. Hardly anyone plays them, so you have a very good chance of getting into the top 5 on your world quite consistently with very little effort. Getting a good standing in a tournament nets you quite a nice chunk of MGP. The game's kind of fun too? Come on, someone's gonna like it. Anyway, getting started. Did you know there's a second zone in the gold saucer? Yeah, the chocobo square. This is effectively the second page of the Google search results as nobody ever goes here. So you'll be forgiven for not knowing or remembering it exists. Go to the tournament keeper on the Verminion side and enter the tournament. Maybe take a quick peek at the tournament rules or at the ranking boards to see the name of the 20 or so other contestants. 15 of which will probably only queue against the AI. These tournaments only last 3 days but happen every week. Though the real challenge is the queue times. This is the queue times for the regular game mode. And this is the queue times looking for a human player in the tournament during prime time. Yeah, having a queue pop is like winning the jumbo cackpot. It doesn't happen often beyond day one of the tournament. While you rack up an impressive queue time, what can you do? What to do while waiting in the queue? The most challenging part of the minion and what sets pros apart from regular players. I mean, you can't even run any instance content. What on earth can you do to fill the time? May I suggest, talk to your friends. Do your taxes. Teach important life lessons to your loved ones. Where are we going? We are going to teach you some very important life lessons. Okay, what lesson? This one. What? Why? What the hell? Come on, no! No! <laughs> you asked! <laughs> Fix up your glamour plates. Clean your inventory. Go gathering. Clean your inventory again. Play the same damn NPC you've been playing for years to get that one triple triad card that never drops. Maybe even put some minions on your Vermillion hotbar. Speaking of which, we should talk about what's good about what minion. A few good minions to get. Here's a few minions that, in my experience, will help you beat pretty much anyone who queues into Vermillion. Most of these are also pretty easy to grab, either from beast tribes, quests, or on the market board. So why do I suggest these minions in particular? Well, it boils down to their special actions. The very first thing you look at when selecting a minion to place on your bar. Most folk don't even bother using these and it'll just smash the largest minion they have against you over and over. This is why, in my opinion, a damage up minion is king. Most of them are already quite well statted, but the damage up just pushes them way over the top. Traps are also a perfect minion for when you're playing against someone who kinda knows what they're doing and have a massive minion ball running around. And healers, well, 
they heal and keep your army rolling and on the field. Some other skills are kind of fun too, but I personally would suggest against any aimed skill because it's just a lot of work for pretty much no payoff. Moving on to strengths and single plus multi-target auto attacks. These are generally not worth thinking about. If your minion is well statted and has a powerful ability and just happens to come with a strength, for example the wind-up Kojin or Luisar, it's just a nice bonus. As for auto attacks types, I mean you can just have one or two minions that happen to have multi-targeting or have an ability to make them multi-target, but don't bother putting in too much thought into this. Nobody else does. Plus, there really aren't that many good multi-target minions. Gotta go fast. Now, this is mostly preference and probably won't matter much since, again, nearly nobody plays this mode, but speed is king. Being able to maneuver quickly will allow for effective control of the entire battlefield against a slower army. You get to pick the engages, you get to disengage whenever you want, and you can run circles around their army. Faster minions are not even that much worse statted than slower minions. Playing faster also allows for the opponent to have less time to react to. The rock paper scissors triangle thingy. The game has a sort of rock paper scissors system for what type of minion is strong against what type. Monsters are strong against critters, critters are strong against poppets, poppets are strong against monsters, and gadgets are neither weak nor strong to anything. But I couldn't find out exactly what it means to be strong against. Does it mean you just got more damage, more defense, who knows. Though this is also more of a suggestion than a rule. A well statted minion that uses its ability will still beat the minion type it's supposed to be weak against. But there's also no point in fighting against the power triangle, you should just have a minion for each type matchup. If you don't know what your opponent minions are, you can just click on them to find out. Costs, costs, costs. A minion cost is also very important. You only get 240 points to work with. Due to this, minions that are 20 and under are generally your best bet as you'll get quite a lot more of them out, giving you more abilities to work with, more overall stats, and overall doing more damage since you have more bodies attacking. It also prevents you from losing your special action from a single minion dying. You'd still want a few 30 cost minions on your bar to use them as a stop measure, if you find yourself going against someone who actually tries to attack your gates. Holy crap, the, the queue actually popped. But, but what will we do now? Briefing period. Just remember to have the few minions you want to start with ready to go. You'll have a cap of 60 at this point, but all the minions you select here will spawn instantly. When the fight begins, make sure you're always summoning something throughout the fight until you hit your cap. Remember to select the gate you wish for the, your minions to be summoned at. This will allow for quicker deployment into combat. You can also move your minions to this area behind the gate and it'll allow you to quickly teleport to any of your free gates. And yeah, that's, um, that's generally how this game goes. Back to the one hour long queue. Wasn't that totally worth it? Bet you're just itching to go play some Verminion right now. Congratulations! You now know more about the minion than pretty much every single person you'll be up against when the stars align and Highland blesses you with a Q pop. You know, I'd like to end on something kind of witty, smart, and funny here, but this mini game's already a joke. So goodbye then, friends, and have a great day.